We're currently discussing the fact that any matrix A can be represented as a product of an orthogonal matrix Q and a symmetric matrix S. So here is an interesting question. Can A also be represented as a product of the same kinds of matrices, but in the opposite order? A equals SQ, where S is the symmetric matrix, and Q is the orthogonal matrix. And the answer is, well, you can think about it on your own, pause the video and come back when you think you have the answer. But the answer is, of course, yes. And to obtain these matrices S and Q, we have to repeat the same logic that we followed when we were just trying to discover these two matrices, Q and S. These, of course, will most likely be different matrices from these. Except now, what do we have to do in order to take advantage of Q being orthogonal? How can we somehow make the matrix Q transpose end up right next to the matrix Q? A transpose A will no longer do the trick because A transpose A will be Q transpose, S transpose, S transpose Q. And Q transpose and Q are no longer next to each other, which was critical in our original derivation. Well, how about A, A transpose instead? Well, that does the trick because A, A transpose, let's see, I think we can do this without writing it down, equals SQ times Q transpose, S transpose. So once again, Q is next to Q transpose, and this product evaluates simply to S squared, just as before, except before we had A transpose A, and now we have A, A transpose. So just as before, when we concluded that S must be the square root of A transpose A, we're now concluding that S must be the square root of A, A transpose, of A, A transpose. And all of the nice things I said about the matrix A transpose A previously, I can now say about the matrix A, A transpose. So previously we had A transpose A, and now we have A, A transpose. It's symmetric, all of its eigenvalues are real, and actually all of them are positive. So the square root is a very cleanly, uniquely defined object. So this will be a sym the symmetric matrix S. And once we have our matrix S, the matrix Q will of course be, just looking here, S inverse A. S inverse A. So everything went perfectly smoothly, just as before. And whereas before we obtained an orthogonal matrix times a symmetric matrix, considering A, A transpose instead will yield a symmetric matrix times an orthogonal matrix. And we don't expect these matrices to be the same, even though I'm using the same letters to denote them, we expect these matrices to be different. So we will now do an example that will show us that these would end up being different matrices. And then in the next video, we'll discover the relationship between this pair of matrices and this pair of matrices when we discuss the singular value decomposition. All right, we have previously decomposed this matrix A as the product of this orthogonal matrix Q and this symmetric matrix S. So now we have to go in the opposite order and represent the matrix A as a product of a symmetric matrix times an orthogonal matrix. So as we just discussed, for that, we need to consider the product A, A transpose, which equals this matrix. And in order to evaluate the matrix S, we need to take the square root of this matrix, which is done, once again, through the eigenvalue decomposition. And we have to determine the eigenvectors of this matrix. Of course, the eigenvalues are the same, but the eigenvectors are different. So the matrix S will be different from what we saw before. Okay, so here comes the eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix. First, we have the matrix of the eigenvectors. Followed by the same diagonal matrix as before, once again, because the eigenvalues are the same. And on the, eigen, and on, and on the diagonal, we have 25, 225 and 2025. And finally, we have the inverse of the first matrix. 
So that's the eigenvalue decomposition of S squared. So the matrix S will have the same form, except we'll have the square roots on the diagonal. In other words, 5, 15, and 45. So here comes the matrix S. Okay, we have our symmetric matrix S. And finally, to determine the matrix Q, which of course equals the product S inverse A. So here we go, Q equals the inverse of the symmetric matrix S times the matrix A itself. And the result is, lo and behold, it's the same matrix Q as before. That's a little bit surprising, but it's not at all a coincidence as we'll show in one of our subsequent videos. Meanwhile, we have found the decomposition for the matrix A, and it equals the product of this symmetric matrix S and this orthogonal matrix Q. So in conclusion, the orthogonal matrix is the same for both decompositions, while the symmetric matrix is different.